I literally just finished watching the latest live stream from Black Magic, which was 90% me falling asleep because all they were talking about was the A10 Mini. Sorry to all the people out there that do streaming and like a live switcher. I'm sure that was very exciting for you, but for me, it was an absolute snoozer. I was excited to hear about a new camera. I have a Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which you can see here in this god-awful, ginormous freaking rig that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. And I have a lot of issues with this camera. And so I was very excited to see what Blackmagic might have up its sleeve in terms of a new form factor, in terms of bringing something new to the market in a world where we have the BGH-1, which is a nice cube. We have the Z-Cam, a nice cube. We have the Komodo, a nice cube. So what does Blackmagic do? They don't release a cube. No, what Blackmagic decided to do was take a 6K and a 4K and basically make it thicker, I guess. I don't know, they kind of condensed it down a little bit. It looks a little bit better than the current 4K and 6K. It's still not my favorite form factor. I'm not a huge fan of these mirrorless hybrid style video cameras. Like it's a video camera, make it a video camera. Why does it have to look like a stills camera? That being said, it does fix a lot of issues that I have with the current pocket cameras. And so now I'm thinking, is the pocket 4K still worth it in 2021. Essentially what Blackmagic has done now is they've taken the 6K, which has kind of been the go-to now in the pocket family for people that are looking for a cinema camera under $3,000, and they've made it just a bit more professional. And by doing so, they've added internal NDs. Internal NDs is something we've been wanting on cameras now for a while, and every time a new cinema camera comes out specifically, Anytime it doesn't have internal NDs, it's like, oh, are you kidding me? Come on, just throw internal NDs on here. Nobody really wants to circle on ND filters to their cameras. And when you're out on set and you're shooting and you jump from one location to the next, if you're going from inside to outside, outside to inside, you don't want to change NDs. You don't want to change filters. You want just a button. You want to flick and all of a sudden you have a nice ND. And so this new 6K Pro does have internal NDs and that is a huge, huge advantage over a lot of the competition in this segment. For context, the Red Komodo doesn't even have internal NDs and you think of the Komodo is also being a Super 35 camera that's pushing $6,000 and this 6K Pro is only 2495. So we're talking about a $2,500 camera, which is, you know, on the same length of most full frame or mirrorless cameras, an X-T4 even is almost close to 2400 bucks. So the internal NDs is a really big deal in my opinion. Another huge thing about this new camera is that they've added a flip up screen. So one of the issues that I've always had with the Pocket 4K is that back screen. And this is the same screen that's on the 6K too you're stuck with it. That's the screen, it stays where it is. I know Tilta made a conversion kit that let you actually add a flip out screen. So to all the people that bought that conversion kit, I'm very sorry because obviously Blackmagic was like, hey, we're just gonna do that ourselves. It's something that these cameras should have had from the beginning, but it is nice to see that Blackmagic listened to us and they did add a tilt up screen. Speaking of screens, they've also added an EVF option. So this is something you can buy separately, but you can add an electronic viewfinder. Now, personally, I actually like electronic viewfinders on video cameras. And I know this is kind of maybe a little bit weird for some people to hear, but if you're ever on set, if you've ever been on a bigger set where there's, you know, using Arri Alexas or using big cameras, you will see a lot of electronic viewfinders. It's just a kind of an old school way to do cinematography. You look into that camera, it's another point of contact as well for stability. And so having an EVF is actually really nice. I find myself with the Pocket 4K constantly actually bringing it to my eye like a dumbass because there is no EVF on this camera. So I'm lifting a screen up to my eye, which is super stupid. But it is nice that you can actually get an EVF now for this new Pocket 6K Pro. Now, the last major update that they've made to this camera is they are no longer using Canon LPE6 batteries. They are using the industry standard Sony MPF battery, which is a battery. I have like 30 of these things. And I'm so stoked that they're not using that Canon battery anymore because as you can see, like half of this rig is like this because I need external power. The internal battery is so awful that you get like 20, 30 minutes tops on it. I can't tell you how much you're gonna get out of these new Sony MPF batteries. I know the new screen that tilts up on this camera is also a bit brighter. So it is yet to be determined if the new battery is adding a whole bunch of new life to this camera or not. It is just better to be using these batteries because I have so many of them and I do know they last longer in general than the LPE6. But again, time will tell if that actually translates into the real world. I'm just more stoked that it's not the Canon LPE6 anymore. In terms of codecs, resolutions, all that kind of stuff, it's a Pocket 6K. We all know the Pocket 6K is a fantastic camera. I personally use the Pocket 4K because I was already heavily invested in micro four thirds glass, but the 6K was always on my radar down the road if I wanted to get into something that was using EF glass because EF glass is obviously amazing. It's pretty easy to adapt as well. But at the same time, I was thinking, you know, I already have this Pocket 4K from a pure image quality standpoint, there isn't a massive difference in sensors, but in usability, 
this 6K Pro makes a lot of sense to me. It's fixing so many things that I have issues with on the current generation pockets that it's hard for me to kind of say, you know, 2,400 bucks, this isn't a huge investment in terms of the camera. And I think you would spend more rigging a Pocket 6K or a Pocket 4K than you would just getting the functionality out of the box with the new 6K Pro. And that's something to think about as you go into this. And it's not to say that the 6K or the 4K are bad cameras all of a sudden, they're still wonderful cameras. And you will still probably rig out a Pocket 6K Pro, but I really like the appeal of a camera I can just pick up and it's ready to go and I'm shooting right away. And I think having a flippy screen, the new battery, the internal NDs, it's kind of a game changer for me with these cameras. I just wish it was a cube, obviously. I can deal with this form factor for a little bit longer, I think. Again, for 2400 bucks, it's really hard to complain too, too much about it. Blackmagic, please make a cube camera. At some point, you are nailing almost everything else except form factor. And it's something I really hope at some point, you you know, the old Micro Studio or something like that can come back in that form factor. But a cube is what we want. And I hope one day you listen. For now, I do think this 6K Pro is a nice step forward. And if you're someone who already has a 6K or 4K, Let's talk about if you should keep that. If you're looking for a new Blackmagic camera, I think the 6K Pro is definitely the one to get. Before I even dive into my new setup with the Pocket 4K, I just wanna get this out of the way. I think the 4K is still a wonderful camera for the money. I think on the used market now, if you consider that the 6K Pro is out, I could see this camera going down to like a thousand bucks, 900 bucks even used, which is kind of insane for what it does. This camera still is super capable on set. It's a wonderful, wonderful image quality. It shoots raw. It does everything you want from a Blackmagic camera. It's just Micro Four Thirds. So if you're not in a Micro Four Thirds, I think go get the 6K Pro. But if you're on a budget and you really want to go low jack, you want to go low key in terms of how much money you're spending, there is no other camera that is delivering the image quality that the Pocket 4K is. And so in that regard, at 900 bucks, 1,000 bucks maybe used, even new at 1,200, there's really not too much wrong to say about this camera. And again, you can rig it up like I have here to make it a camera that is probably best for you. And everyone's rig is gonna be different. This is just the rig that I like, and it might give you inspiration when you're building out your pocket rig. But for me, this is the setup that is actually now inspiring me to shoot with this camera. And so it's a camera I'm gonna hang on to. I am probably gonna pick up that 6K Pro because it's just nice to have a new camera like that. And I think I do wanna get more into EF and Super 35 on the cinema side. But this camera is going to stay in my kit. It's just too affordable to let go of. I would rather just have it and have it as a backup, have it as a B cam and just have it because it's cool. I think it's a cool camera, especially for the money. And so rigging it up with some stuff that's been sent to me and some stuff that I can recommend to you guys is still on the table. Speaking of table, we have a new setup here. So let's put it to good use and break down this new pocket 4K rig. Yeah, so we're not gonna use that table. Actually, I'm gonna use my coffee table to break this down just because the light was a little bit easier and uh, it's my video so I can do what I want. Now you can see this rig really isn't the cleanest rig in the world and there's a couple reasons for that. One is I just think the Pocket 4K is ugly in itself so there's no real reason to polish a turd. And the other is I'm frugal and I didn't wanna buy specific cables or anything like that that had to be the exact length. Maybe I'll get around to that one day but for now it's really about function over fashion. My thought process behind this build was really that I wanted something that was good for tripod work so when I threw it on sticks, it would be fine. But more so, I really wanted something I could pick up and use for handheld because most of what I shoot is handheld. And the thing with the Pocket 4K is it's a relatively light camera. So you want something that has a bit of weight when you're running around shooting handheld so you get rid of all of those micro jitters. So that was kind of the thesis around this rig. I'm also not gonna bore you with all the nitty gritty details like the cage and all the various little mounting things that I've used to put this together. There's just a few main points that I wanna highlight and that's power, the monitor, the microphone, and the HDMI transmitter. My main source of power for this rig are these newer V-mount batteries. Now, I know newer is not the greatest company in the world, but I have three of these batteries. I've been using them for almost a year now, and they have not given me any issues. They last about three, four hours per charge with this rig, which I think is great. And then I have it all attached to this subphoto base plate that attaches the V-mount to the rig itself. Now, what I love about this base plate, not to mention it was only $100, is it has every output that you could possibly want to power things that are on your rig. And the best part is I have it all now rigged to the one switch on this mount itself that lets me hit this switch and the entire unit turns on at once. The camera, the monitor, and the HDMI transmitter all on one switch. And something I've realized is now that I'm using a dummy battery instead of using the actual AC port to detap on the V-mount, I'm getting a battery percentage meter on the camera itself so I know when I need to swap that battery out, which is super clutch. The base plate also came on a really nice articulating mount for the rails in case I need to access the screen, which isn't actually necessary as we move on to to the monitor. So Portkey sent me this LH5P five and a half inch monitor and at a base level, it's just a really nice crisp 1700 nit 
bright monitor. But what makes this monitor really interesting when you pair it with a Pocket 4K or a Pocket 6K is that it taps into the Blackmagic Bluetooth, which means you can actually control your camera directly from the monitor itself. So you don't have to actually access your camera at all. Now with this monitor, everything that you can do on the camera itself, you can do on the monitor. You can even control focus if you wanted to, if you're using a native micro four thirds lens, but all the controls that you would have on the camera, like your codecs, what frame rates, uh, your focus, your iris, everything that you can do on the camera, down to the white balance, down to the tint even, is now controllable with this monitor. So this got me thinking, what if I paired this wireless monitor with a wireless video feed? Hollyland had sent me the 400S Pro, which is their latest kind of affordable HDMI transmitter system. So I thought, I do a lot of talking head now for YouTube and there's things that I wanna film myself, but the issue is it's very hard to control the camera as well as see yourself while using a Pocket 4K or a Pocket 6K. So I thought if I take this port keys monitor and I put it on the HDMI transmitter, I should be able to sit down and completely control my entire camera wirelessly. This would also be great if you needed a director's monitor or if you need to give it to a focus puller. You essentially have an entirely wireless setup to control your camera and also monitor at the same time. So I think the 400S Pro coupled with this port keys monitor is a really, really solid solution for wireless control and wireless video, and it'll make your life a whole lot easier on set and also for filming yourself. Something else I wanna mention is when I do have the monitor on the rig itself, I like to mount it on the left-hand side, kind of like an FX6, FX9, or like a C200, C300 kind of vibe. If you haven't tried that, check it out. I just think it's a better perspective for your monitor if you're using this like a handheld rig. The last part of the build is the microphone, and for a microphone, we are using the Comica Trax. This is a really quirky and kind of interesting microphone, and the reason I chose it for this build is because you can actually point it in two directions at once. And what I thought was interesting about that is that I'm often kind of like giving a lot of directions and whatnot while I'm shooting. And so I think when you get into the edit, it's nice to be able to hear yourself. And also if you were interviewing somebody, you're going to get a nice clean audio feed of what you said as well as the subject. And I just like the idea that if I need to quickly rotate this microphone to any direction that I need to pick something up, it's just really good for scratch audio. I do think the Comica Trax is an interesting solution. I also really like that it has a stepless gain control. I have to say, this is actually the first time I've ever felt inspired to use the Pocket 4K. So I think if I was asked, is this rig a success? Based on that merit alone, the fact that I'm actually wanting to use it, I do think it was a success. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown on my Pocket 4K rig. I hope you're excited about that new Pocket 6K Pro. If you have any questions about this setup, the monitors, the wireless, anything to do with this rig, or even if you wanna just chat about that new 6K Pro, I'll see you in the comments. Otherwise, you will see me next time I feel like making a video. Peace.